the stats about Saskatchewan are terrible, sir, as you know. In July, with less than 70% of the population vaccinated with one dose, you chose essentially to drop all restrictions in that three quick step process. You were warned not to do it. Um, are you apologizing now for how you handled the pandemic? Uh, no, I, 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 you know, I don't think anyone has a, a roadmap map on exactly how you manage your way through a pandemic. Uh, what we're running into here in Saskatchewan and is uh, the the fourth wave is uh, is hitting our communities hard. Uh, we have, you know, a a lower vaccination rate than than many other provinces, higher than many other areas of the world, but lower than many other provinces. And in particular, we have, you know, a number of uh, communities, often rural and remote communities, that have uh, quite a low vaccination rate and it is ultimately uh, those that have made the choice not to get vaccinated that are ending up in our ICU department uh, here in in Saskatchewan and and really creating that indirectly that pressure on our entire healthcare service system as we transfer slow down services uh, and transfer services uh, uh, to support uh, those those folks that are in our ICU but, but department, Premier, and ultimately now we're, we're have shipped six out, uh, and are, we'll have discussions later this week as as if we need to ship maybe some more uh, people uh, out as well. But, but Premier, let's talk straight. I know you said there's no roadmap, but you did have a lot of health advice, and other provinces took a very different map than you. In July, no masks in public areas, no limits on public gatherings, no limits on bars and restaurants. Uh, you didn't change that stuff till some of that stuff till September. Um, you, you know, you still didn't even then put limits on gathering. Those are your choice. So I, I'm asking you, do you take responsibility for that? Were those choices a mistake? And as you've been asked in your province, will you apologize for those decisions? When, when we look at uh, the public health measures that were put in uh, in September, uh, they are starting to work here in the province. Our numbers are decreasing and even our hospitalizations are starting to decrease uh, over the last 10 days. Uh, our ICUs uh, have not. Uh, they, they continue uh, to be far too high uh, here uh, in this province. And so when we look back at when we implemented uh, the 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 public health measures in September. Um, it's fair to say that we should have moved uh, earlier uh, than we did, maybe a week or two earlier than we did, and it would have uh, preserved some of the, the capacity that we uh, really desire to have in our, our health care system, in our health care system. And, and in doing so, um, we have folks in Saskatchewan now that are not able to access services. We have kids uh, that you know, aren't able to access some of the therapies, whether it be right. speech or, or physical therapies uh, that they need, surgeries, and, and you know, for that, uh, this government takes responsibility and yes, uh, does apologize to the people of Saskatchewan for uh, not acting a week or two quicker with the, the measures that we have in place now that are proving to be effective as it would have uh, saved us uh, some of the challenging decisions that we had to make this week. But, but Premier, when you apologize for that, um, are you literally saying that it's just a week or two earlier or was there that sense when you and I know Alberta, when you were kind of having that open for business summer uh, and other provinces, I live in Ontario, it wasn't doing the same thing. BC wasn't, uh, Quebec wasn't. Uh, there was a much larger step process. Again, I just ask you, sir, do you take accountability for those mistakes? Because here you are sending patients um, to Ontario. Uh, I ju I'm just trying to get accountability on this because it's a really critical thing. Lives are on the line. Those decisions eventually fall on your shoulders. Do you take responsibility for it? Absolutely. Lives have been on the line uh, throughout this pandemic, and we're very fortunate uh, as Saskatchewan to be in a, a nation like Canada where uh, we can uh, support uh, one another. And we're unfortunately at Saskatchewan right now that is on the receiving end of, of that support and sending our patients to six of our patients uh, to Ontario. And for that, we're forever grateful to the Ford government and the people of Ontario and the healthcare system in, in Ontario. Um, but as as, uh, as I said earlier in this pandemic, uh, we were able uh, to provide uh, that type of support uh, to other areas, uh, including Ontario. Uh, so this is uh, this is new for all of us uh, across uh, across Canada and around the world. And I think as we you know look ahead and, and look at the lessons uh, that we've learned and 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 understand that we have tools today and, and in the weeks ahead that we really haven't had in the early days of this pandemic. In the early days, all we had was public health measures. But as we look ahead to the next number of weeks, there's a number of other tools that we now have access to. And uh, we right. in Saskatchewan are most certainly going to make use of every tool we have uh, to drive uh, you know, our hospitalization rate down. And we've done that with the public health measures that are now implemented. 
Okay, your, your system is on the brink of having to triage people. You, as you say, you've sent people over. Triage meaning who shall live, who shall die. The Health Minister Patty Haidu had said in late September that she spoke to her Saskatchewan counterpart, Minister Merriman, about federal government being ready to help. Um, uh, no, no request came. Uh, I spoke to the Saskatchewan opposition leader, Dr. Riley, Ryan Miley, and he told me on question period that you, sir, put politics ahead of people's lives and you should have asked for help from the federal government earlier. Here's what he told me. Experts in public health, even our own chief medical health officer, were giving advice. He was ignoring it for political reasons. He put politics ahead of people's lives. He's saying you ignored public health advice because you didn't want to look like you were turning to the federal government for help. And he said that was, uh, you neglected to do it. And it was a very costly thing. What's your response to that? And why didn't you ask for help earlier? Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we have put together our joint, uh, our joint command center, our provincial emergency operations center, uh, which is the furthest thing uh, from a political organization that is, uh, that is, is working with, uh, working through all of the relationships uh, that we have, both within Canada, outside of Canada, and with the federal government. And they have been working quite closely with the federal government uh, throughout the course of the last number of days. Ultimately, came forward uh, to us as the government today, or sorry, on Monday, and uh, had put forward the request to the federal government for some very specific resources to support a, a number of ICU beds here in Saskatchewan. Uh, that letter was sent from our health minister then on the advice of that uh, emergency operations center, uh, which I, I would I would take great issue with what the leader of the opposition has said. Uh, nothing could be further from this being uh, any having anything to do with politics. It has to everything to do uh, with supporting uh, the people of Saskatchewan. And as I said, we're very fortunate to be uh, in a nation where a province like Ontario can provide us with some of that support uh, here at this time as Saskatchewan did earlier in the pandemic. The Regina Leader Post says that the head of Saskatchewan's public safety agencies says the province first sought out help from a number of American states before seeking help from the federal government. Is that true? No, uh, what we what the uh, provincial emergency operations center was doing was uh, relying and sourcing uh, um, what type of capacity they had uh, through all of the relationships uh, that they had. Yes, some of those were U.S. states, but at the same time, uh, they were also uh, in discussions with the federal government as to what type of human resource capacity the federal government would actually be able to provide Saskatchewan. Um, and uh, so that ask has went into the federal government at the same time that they identified uh, that there was some capacity in beds in. Ontario, and that's why uh, we made both decisions to request the uh, uh, the assistance of the federal government, some very specialized assistance in the way of human resources, but also uh, to request to move a, a half a dozen uh, Saskatchewan patients uh, into facilities in Ontario to ensure that that everyone can continue to have the the highest quality of care that's available. Uh, just last thing, Premier, again, and, and it's tragic to say that right now the highest death rates right now in COVID is in, in your province, but the lowest vaccination rates are among the lowest vaccinations. W again, why? Who's responsible for the, the fact that your province has some of the lowest vaccination rates? Do you think you needed vaccine mandates earlier, not lifting everything in this the summer? Again, was that a mistake? Uh, the, the, the proof of vaccination program is proving to be effective in Saskatchewan. I think will prove to be uh, uh, very helpful in the, in the weeks and months ahead. We've delivered since uh, we implemented this program uh, over 125,000 uh, vaccines in Saskatchewan. That's up uh, three or four times on our daily uh, admi administration. No, I know, uh, I know that, basis. but my so question that, is, did you positive. do it too late? Yeah, uh, I, I, I get yeah, it. We, did you do yeah, it too we, late? We, that's, you the know, key, that's the key issue yeah. because of the crisis. Yeah, you know, I, when, when, you know, to my earlier statements, uh, Quebec had moved about a month before we did. We had moved on October the 1st. And that is, uh, you know, precisely one of the items that uh, we, we maybe should have been looking at moving uh, earlier with respect to that. And it would have uh, provided, you know, some breathing room uh, to our in, our in our hospitalization system. But at the end of the day, we, we continue to have, as I said, a number of, uh, number of communities in this province. And we're working very hard with those community leaders to, you know, push our, our vaccination rates along uh, here in Saskatchewan through yes the proof of vaccination policy but also through you know reaching out to leaders in these uh, quite often rural and remote communities to see what we can do to uh, one the vaccines are already available but to encourage people um, and uh, make sure they fully understand the impact uh, that unvaccinated the unvaccinated population is having on our on our health care system here in Saskatchewan I gotta leave it there Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe thank you for joining us sir I appreciate it